welcome back again. New topic, data democratization and analytics engineering. A new topic at GoDataFest Club Cloud. With me are three guests, Kevin, Eduardo and my colleague Bram. Kevin is a commercial analytics manager at Interfood Group. He has a background in uh, consultancy as well as science and currently he is uh, responsible for the global engineering and science practice at Interfood and he actively contributes to the formation and the execution of data strategy, including democratization and change. Eduardo, joining us remotely, is the CTO of Funda and he has helped Funda shape uh, in structure, focus and strategy and their significant, uh, significant technical developments. And he has a background in software engineering, uh, as well as an appetite for continuous learning, knowledge exchange, uh, and he likes to successfully guide his teams and reshape Funda to be ready for the future. Welcome, Eduardo. And finally, my colleague, Bram Oxendorf, lead data scientist at Go Data Driven. Uh, he has a background in the stars, but currently he <laughs> supports organizations on their road to data democratization, organizing teams and builds end-to-end -end data products. And he's also one of the people leading our AI practice. Welcome, everybody. Um, so let me ask you, first start with asking you to introduce a little bit about your company, the organization you're working for. Kevin, may I ask you to start? What is Interfood? Surely, and uh, thank you for uh, for the invitation. It's a pleasure to uh, to be here. Interfood is a, a global dairy commodity trading business. That's uh, not something that you hear every day, but we do approximately a million metric tons of dairy products every year. Wow. That dairy product physically ends up in your chocolate bars, in your butter, ice cream, etc., etc. So there's, uh, there's many trucks and, uh, and ships across the world at this moment with, uh, with a product on its way to, uh, to the end customer. And there we serve all of the big multinationals. And to, we try to do so by, uh, by adding value in getting the right product at the right time in the right specification to the right location. Interesting. Thank you. Eduardo, Funda, well known to many Dutch people, but uh, perhaps for our international viewers less well known. Yeah, for sure. Uh, when when I uh, when I joined Funda, I had no idea what Funda was and, and how big it was in the Netherlands. It's quite quite interesting. It's a real estate platform in the Netherlands, um, uh, two-sided marketplace. Uh, you know, brokers uh, push uh, uh, properties, listings, and consumers are able to 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 get information about the, about the listings, book appointments, talk to the broker. And um, yeah, the, the, the interesting part that I found with, with Funda when I joined was how, how big it, of a brand it is and, and how visited it is. It's one of the top uh, uh, websites in, in, in the Netherlands. We have about uh, 6 million visitors every month and, and like, like 80 million to total visits, a lot of traffic, which technically is also, and, for, and in terms of data, is also a really nice uh, challenge. Yeah, I can imagine. Yeah, it's it's really, really also with the housing market, current housing market in the Netherlands, it's really a, a platform that many of us uh, frequently visit, me included. Um, Kevin, can I ask you to 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 tell me a little bit more about how you started this this journey in data? Yeah, certainly. Um, I mentioned dairy, uh, but let me explain a little bit more about why data is so important in dairy. Uh, in the in the commodity business. Prices and, and early access to information is everything. Uh, and it's, it's core to the value that we add to, to our clients. And this is also why we felt it was important as part of our new corporate strategy to have data as an important enabler. And that's really where our journey started in, in trying to formalize what that means in terms of data strategy to be successful in, in, that, uh, in that strategic pillars. And those focus on derivatives, they focus on commercial excellence, and also they focus on operational excellence. So that's really uh, the starting point of our journey at uh, at Interfood. Yeah, and you said, yeah, you thought, well, we need to 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 have to create even more value based on what the data we uh, we actually uh, collect already for your day-to-day -day, uh, business. Yeah, interesting. And and um, uh, uh, pains, gains, ambitions. What 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 did you notice when you said, okay, we need to start properly with a proper journey in this regard? 
Yeah, I think uh, the first step is, is getting alignment top to bottom in the organization on what data is supposed to mean uh, mm -hmm. and where we see added value. And I think there we had a wonderful gain of, of achieving that alignment early on with, with a great vision from the top. But then, of course, the pain comes at the implementation is finding the right people to actually make the strategy happen yeah. in terms of, uh, of data professionals and then also in terms of well, we'll speak about democratization later, but really that starts with training and, and getting uh, all of the people on board. So yeah. really that's a lot of pain in, in the first couple of years, I would say even. Uh, but now we're starting to, uh, uh, to see the gain of, uh, of that hard work. Uh, we see that, uh, that people know actually where to find us. They have seen the low hanging fruit and the quick wins. And we now actually dare to take on bigger ambitions in terms of, of data. And I already mentioned uh, that uh, that prices and volatility are, are major in, in our markets. And it's really these kind of topics that we're now addressing with the new power of data. Yeah, so if I understand correctly, uh, the, the, the value was, or the potential value was clear. You, you, uh, you, you asked for buy-in from, from management and then you were more or less on your way with yep. people, training, et cetera. Yeah, exactly. interesting, interesting. Yeah. How about you, uh, Eduardo? Uh, of course, Funda collects a lot of, of uh, interactions with uh, visitors. What, what set you on this journey or set Funda on this journey? Yeah, so uh, Funda traditionally has always had a big, big focus on, on um, uh, data and research, but really more on the qualitative side. So, you know, like actually interviewing customers, trying to understand the needs of a customer in, in, in a more uh, explicit way. Um, but when the, the feedback loop, when, when you're collecting uh, that sort of data is, is much longer, right? It takes a lot of time to go through that process, to analyze it, to then use it eternally. And um, when, um, when I started or when we started on, on this journey, you could, you could see that you, we, we basically had, I, I would say, like three main, uh, well, let's, let's call them issues. One, that, one is we collected the same data for different uh, features which turned into um, uh, different data, right? So you would have a feature that would show statistics to a broker, and then you would have a feature that would classify a listing based on the user behavior. They are all using the same data, you know, click stream data, but they, but because they were built in uh, separately, um, the data turned to be different. We started in a different way. We, we analyzed it with different tools. We reported in a different way. And you can multiply that by six or, uh, six or seven times. And that's what, what we had. We also had an organizational uh, challenge. Like the setup we had was really, we had data science and, 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 and what we now call data analytics, but at the time was, was BI really focused on marketing. They were part of the marketing department. They were really focusing on marketing activities, which meant that that's what they did naturally. So we didn't really leverage data, uh, quantitative data as much as we could on, on products, on uh, customer service, on sales. Um, and, and that led, that was the, also a, an incentive for us to kind of take a step back and think, how can we do this for the whole organization? Yeah, yeah. So also for you, you already saw that potential value. It, it was just uh, the structure and the way of working that needed to, to change significantly. Yeah, correct. Yeah, yeah. Interesting. And, and is this something that we or you see more in this market, Bram? Well, so yeah, working at Godet, Godet Driven means that also we're working with you know, a lot of uh, different clients across industries and sizes, and uh, we help them realize value from, uh, uh, from their data assets. But it also you know, it gives us a unique opportunity to show what sort of the common uh, bottlenecks are that are withholding organizations uh, in using their data uh, effectively. And uh, for example, one of these bottlenecks is that um, the data availability within an organization so limited data availability it means that data just n simply does not reach the average business end user. Another bottleneck that we see is uh, a knowledge gap or a skill gap um, where, uh, in this case, business end users may not be aware of the possibilities of working with data or they simply do not have the technical skill set of uh, extracting information out of data themselves. And what we also often see is data quality issues. And if you have data quality issues, 
that really compromises trust in using data yeah. effectively as well. And yeah, how I then see it is that this all converges into one big, big problem, uh, or like a, a bottleneck, is that data does not reach the right people at the right time within an organization to uh, expedite decision making. No, no, no. Uh, that, that, that is similar to what uh, Kevin and Eduardo were uh, describing, right? So yeah. either there's a, there's a uh, different silos are using the same data with different definitions or uh, you need to, to, to combine it, uh, um, train people. So, so how to, to mitigate this? That's, uh, that's a good question, and this is also what we, uh, one of the reasons why we've, um, why we've sort of consolidated this into a white paper together with uh, Eduardo uh, and Kevin about uh, data democratization. Okay. And this really tries to get, um, uh, t uh, use these, uh, these bottlenecks and uh, try to fix those by uh, making data available and allowing people in an organization to extract information themselves and data democratization is really about you know, putting the right information into the hands of the right people at the right time and allowing them to extract uh, um, and uncover opportunities themselves. Okay. And um, uh, I can give a, like a few, like, uh, we can go like a deep dive into dem data democratization. Yeah, sure. I, uh, I prepared a few slides as well for this, uh, for this discussion. So when we talk about data democratization, um, uh, I always think about this, uh, the two main enablers of data democratization, and it's one of that is here on the, on the slide. Back, and you see on the horizontal axis, you see availability. And that simply means uh, that an organization needs to facilitate the discovery, the usage, and the distribution of data across the organization. So if you want to make steps along that axis, you've got to make data available in your organization. On the vertical axis here, you see self-service, which is the process of um, uh, enabling those within the organization to use data for the day-to-day -day work. And as the figure shows, uh, it, you know, these two axes, they span a parameter space where you can sort of plot the organization, sort of the current state of your organization. In, uh, and here we have a few example states. And uh, yeah, I think this is a, sort of a central element of, uh, of the white paper that we've just uh, released as well. Interesting, interesting. And by parameter space, you mean uh, the, the possibilities where exactly. you can be as, a, as an organization, right? Yeah, yeah. that's right. Yeah. Uh, interesting, interesting. Good, uh, interesting summary of where you can go to as, a, uh, as an organization. Um, Eduardo, the, uh, Funda has gone through a transformation, you said. Uh, you've been uh, one of the people uh, pivotal for that uh, success. Um, can you give a few examples of how it changed decision making? Eh? You were already uh, saying that it was already a, li a little bit scattered, but by combining it, uh, shaping it, has it has it in how has it influenced uh, Funda even more? Um, I think the, the 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 biggest impact that that, that we see is. Um, we have, of course, monthly meetings with the, with the, the tactical meetings, let's say, with the teams where we go through the roadmap, where we, we go through the, the progress and we kind of look at the metrics. That's the thing that, that changed. It became more and more about the metrics and, and less and less about uh, qualitative feedback and opinions and, um, you know, things that different people will, will, will see differently. Um, which, which in turn make discussions way easier, you know, when you're talking about data. It, it, it makes it makes discussions uh, shorter as well. Yeah. Um, you actually see that you actually see that meetings now, those meetings are smaller now than they were three years ago. And 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 I think that's a, a nice proof. You know, the proof is in the pudding. That's a nice proof that um, having a discourse around facts uh, doesn't necessarily mean that facts are always. You know that you should always follow the the, the data uh, universally, uh, but it just makes the conversation much more practical and and, and easy. I think that's yeah. by far the biggest uh, change that we saw everywhere, from top discussions on on the executive uh, team level to the teams themselves discussing about priorities internally. It, it's all about data and the metrics. Yeah, yeah. So it's more about uh, less about opinion and more about facts. So that that I, I yeah that compressed the amount of time you needed to discuss 
uh, opinions <coughs> and focus on the facts. Yeah. 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 Exactly. Yeah. And and what was your role in this in in all this, uh, Eduardo? Yeah, I, <laughs> funny funny question. I think that's um, this also this <laughs> the role of doing this also came with my first job as CTO. So I grew to the CTO rank, and suddenly I had this challenge on my hands. Specifically, I had the task of identifying that there was this gap that we needed to tackle, um, and as I went through my job as CTO, I also learned to delegate. I learned to leverage the the, the, the great people I have around me, um, and I think that that's how my role. I think that's why this was successful at Funda. Was uh, I was lucky to have a great team that understood the the strategic uh, importance of this, mm -hmm. um, and and was able to 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 move to move with it and, and deliver. Uh, if I look back into you know three years ago, I had I had like this document where which I wrote it was called you know data at Funda, um, and and it kind of explained very theoretically what we needed to do, but that was that was worth nothing if I didn't have just this amazing team that was able to not only not only use it as a as an inspiration or anything like that, but just enrich it and build on top of that and build what we have today. Yeah. So um, I just. I kind of just put a flag and say, let's go there, and 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 they did the whole work. Yeah, ah, good to hear. So it's it's and this ties in with what uh, Kevin started all, already with that you need a good team, um, and 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 yeah. So yeah, I also wanted to ask Kevin, like, if you look at this 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 image, uh, is it is it, could you sort of uh, sketch the journey that uh, that Interfood has gone through um, on the basis of this. Uh, of this illustration. Yeah, I, I sure can. And, and let me start actually by, by applauding uh, Eduardo's comment on, on the team, right? Also a journey like this, where you kind of try to have that uh, that target at somewhere uh, top right corner, hopefully in uh, in your in your parameter space. Uh, you can only get there with, with, with a great team. Uh, so that's also what our journey has been like, is, is having that vision and then really starting from the bottom and doing the work. And that journey, I believe, started, let's say, a couple of years ago. So let's say two years back with, with a BI team uh, trying to democratize insights uh, as opposed to democratizing data because first you kind of want to kickstart that initiative. And that's very much also reflected in, uh, in, in your image here. So it starts at, at the bottom left and then you, you work your way up. And what has been a really large accelerator has been the data platform because not only it allows us to democratize uh, data. It's also really our central place for innovation. So people come with IDs, they can prototype and then get back to us to have that, that, that catalyst role. And really then the, the modern data stack kicks in because we focus on data platform today, but really what we have done is, is also add AI components on top. So this is not only the place for data, it's also a place for analytics and then democratizing the insight again. So essentially we're retrofitting the way which we're using Tableau. And we're retrofitting the way in which our users trust on their business and data processes. Mm -hmm. And this is this is rather serious, right? So it also means that sometimes you have to kill your darlings. <laughs> People have been using Excels for years and it works. But now there's a new kit on the block. Yeah. Well, that takes time, it takes adoption, it takes culture change and training in order for people to become self-serviced they need to regain that confidence in the new technology. And that's what I try to do with yeah. the team. So yeah, when you talk about the data platform, uh, I guess that, that's, uh, that will increase the data availability in, the, in your organization, allowing you to move towards the right in this diagram. Absolutely. And when you talk about tools like Tableau or other self-service uh, low-code tooling, that will boost your self-service in your organization. But how do you determine as an organization where do you, you know, where you are and where do you end up? Uh, where do you want to end up in this in this diagram? Do you have any advice for for us for, in that regard? Yeah, I think it's it's a matter of of timing. So what I feel in terms of availability and self service is that we're trying to have a step by step, lock step kind of upward movement. So that means to some teams you can go faster. And with others, you try to make availability increases first and then kind of train the self-service because some of these business processes that I described that involve killing the darlings, mm -hmm. like, like if you talk to a finance director or a risk manager, 
very comfortable with their data quality and, and, and the processes that they have. This really takes time and, and you don't want to rush these things, right? But you want to kind of use the momentum that you show with other teams and other departments in having availability and self-service to then also accomplish that there, such that as an organization as a whole globally, you're making that step-by-step -step upward movement. Yeah, so you, uh, with lockstep, you mean that you show the value and then you can build on exactly. top of that? Okay. Exactly. Yeah, so lockstep, it, uh, absolutely. And yeah. it also applies to the technology roadmap and the value creation roadmap being yeah. lockstepped in that way. Yeah, oh, nice. So it, it, it really is, it's not about this big plan and you start to execute it. No, it's about small steps, show, show success, show value, and then move on yeah, and build on that. Yeah, you want to mitigate risk and, and celebrate success. And, and if you make this thing too big, then, then there's a huge uh, risk of failure. Yeah. Uh, but you want to show those, those merits of the data journey to all levels of the organization. Yeah, yeah. not only C-level, but everybody also the practitioners. Absolutely. Yeah. And there again, we, we come back to, to Eduardo's finding, like if you show results, then you also get more of these team members inspired and they will join you. And then all of a sudden you notice that you're not dancing by yourself, but <laughs> there's a whole crowd, right? Yeah, 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 you yeah, must yeah, have yeah. seen this video. Yeah. So yeah, that's uh, that's kind of the, the, the journey that uh, that we're trying to make. Yeah, interesting, interesting. Uh, y you mentioned uh, uh, the data platform, modern data stack. Uh, Eduardo, is that also something that you recognize as an important element in, in, in the success? Yes, uh, for sure. Uh, I think related to, to what, uh, what was said, I think the, you should also use the right, uh, tool at the right time. Um, indeed, I think that one of the, the first things that we saw was we were, we were trying to do, uh, advanced things while we could do the same thing with simpler tools and simple, uh, in, in, in a simpler way. Um, you mentioned, you know, building on top of, of what you were, you know, were slowly doing. And I think that that's also a key takeaway for us. Like, you know, when, when you're trying to do predictive analysis, but you're used, you know, you're just good at doing reports and ad hoc because that's the ad hoc stuff, because that's kind of the, the tool set that you have, you're going to suck at doing predictive analysis. So let's start with doing reports and ad hoc and uh, ad hoc work in, in a really professional way. Let's maybe start with more like stati statistical analysis uh, and then you can graduate to, 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 to predictive analysis. And that's what we kind of, we, 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 we took a step back and we were like, okay, do we really need, you know, uh, Arup and, 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 and Mahout for, all, for analyzing our data? Can we take a step back and just use SQL and, 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 and maybe use the data on a warehouse instead of having like this separate uh, flow that looks into gigabytes of data, uh, taking that step back and then kind of starting from the bottom with the right tool for the right data that we have for the right out outcome that we can get, uh, was, was, was fundamental. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, great to hear. And, uh, yeah, the right data at the right time. Um, yeah. So, so data becomes more and more important, right? Bram? Mm -hmm. uh, so that also means that you need uh, a certain amount of robustness in the way you generate these data sets. Is that, the, how do you see that? Yeah, definitely. Um, I think also what, what, we, what is discussed in our, in our white paper and one of the quotes of one of our co-authors, Sasha Rochefein, he, uh, he mentions that data availability was a big challenge, but at least the big of a challenge is the usability and the, uh, the quality of data itself. Yeah. And that's, uh, this is an area, so w if you go from, uh, from data to high quality data that is fit for purpose, that is uh, valuable in itself, um, we, are, uh, we are helping our, our customers that, uh, doing that by also uh, establishing or actually identifying a new role amongst uh, data professionals. Okay which is the, uh, the analytics engineer, but that will be the topic of our next discussion. Okay. I'm also very curious to hear uh, from, from, from Kevin of how did you see sort of the responsibilities within the data team uh, change in regards of these new technologies, uh, the modern data platforms, et cetera? Yeah, they, they, they certainly are. So, so let me elaborate on that. So given the fact that 
you launch new data technology and you make data available, people will also start looking at you, right? And that's, I suppose, a good thing because you want to create that added value of the democratization and the service uh, and, and the training you can provide as, as a central platform team. Now, it also means that for some of these processes that used to happen outside of the data platform, now you lose your line of sight. So data quality used to be man monitored by a human. Now, potentially, that is monitored by a, a modern data tool. So this brings new responsibilities, both to, to the, the team members as well as to the technology. And you can only get these things wrong once. So this is really where we have to mature also as an organization within Interfood is that we're launching this new technology and also we have to make sure that it will, uh, it will withhold uh, the, uh, the, the increasing important business processes that run on it. Oh. Yeah, and that, that spans finance, operations, commercial decision making. It's exactly the sweet spot where I love to be <laughs> with the team, but it also comes with responsibilities. Yeah. Oh, interesting. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, reaching the end of this this uh, great conversation. Uh, final question to uh, first you, Eduardo. So say um, somebody approaches you from an audit organization and asks you for advice on how to approach this. Eh? Uh, what would your number one advice be? How to start? How to? Eh, what is the biggest, most important? piece of advice you can give them? Um, I would say be wary of a tool solving your problem. Usually yeah. a tool won't solve your problem. It will help, but it won't solve all your problems. I've seen it many, many times that people see something that's like hyped and they buy this expensive license and they think that will help. It won't. It's, it's about understanding the general philosophy you, you need to, to, to follow with data, understanding the, the, the context of your data, um, the people that you have, and that's the, the, the first step that you have. The tool only comes next. It will possibly help, but never start with a tool. Always start with uh, strategy, people, and the tool comes next. Here, yeah, yeah. Anything to add to that, uh, Kevin? I'm afraid it, it's in the same direction of, of people. So I've discussed the, the timing of, of implementing changes and, and creating business value with, with the different business departments. And the way to do it is, is kind of show and, and lead the way to value. But that has been discussed. The, the big advice I would have is how do you actually do that? And to me, this starts with the people in the data team. So don't create too much distance between the data team and the business. What I typically see in organizations that there is there's business and then there is a data analyst facing the business and behind the data analyst sits a data scientist and behind the data scientist sits an engineer mm. that's kind of a, a million miles away from the business. Yeah. So what we try to do in, in, in terms of organization or organ organizing our squad is that I like to think of this as a triangle. So scientist, engineer and analyst working very closely together, actually sometimes are in each other's tooling and in each other's code. Mm -hmm. And then using that triangle to kind of show the business like, okay, this is how that can be done because we're working together and so can you and so can we. Yeah. So that's that's really, and I think also relates to your discussion of the analytics engineer. It's it's a success formula that I've seen mm -hmm. uh, and um, I'm really excited to continue working it. Yeah, great, great pieces of advice. Of course, uh, it's, it's GoDataFest, it's Club Cloud, it's all about technology. But in the end, it turns out that it's uh, nice to have technology, but it's people first. Great, great uh, thought to end this interview with. Uh, I want to thank my guests. Eduardo, first, uh, you joining remotely because you're expecting your first born. Uh, good luck with that. Uh, enjoy your time uh, as, a, as a new father. Kevin, thank you very much for coming to the studio. And also Bram. Looking forward to have a couple of more sessions with you uh, <laughs> later on. Um, yeah, I want to close up. This is the first interview uh, in a couple of uh, nice sessions we will have. We will also speak with a, an actual analytics engineer and ask him about how he experiences his role as an analytics engineer and how he, huh, as uh, being a new role, how he shapes uh, his own 
future. And we also have three colleagues uh, joining us and showing us some actual analytics work. So thank you very much for your attention. Enjoy, have a nice day, bye.